Now, this was not a normal week, so this is not a normal show. President Trump's actions and inactions in the wake of Charlottesville are provoking some uncomfortable conversations, mostly off the air, if we're being honest. In discussions among friends and family and debates on social media, people are questioning the president's fitness. But these conversations are happening in newsrooms and TV studios as well. Usually, after the microphones are off or after the stories are filed, after the paper's been put to bed, people's concerns and fears and questions come out. Questions that often feel out of bounds, off limits, too hot for TV. Questions like these. Is the President of the United States a racist? Is he suffering from some kind of illness? Is he fit for office? And if he's unfit, then what? These are upsetting, polarizing questions. They're, they're uncomfortable to ask. But we in the national news media can't pretend like our readers and viewers aren't already asking. They are asking. This is how deep the country's divide has really become. My impression is that since President Trump's inauguration, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of tiptoeing going on. His actions have been described as unpresidential, as unhinged, and, and sometimes even crazy. Now, that word crazy can be interpreted several different ways. Uh, it gets said a lot more in private than it gets said on TV. For instance, this next soundbite was never meant to be heard on TV at all. Last month, Republican Senator Susan Collins was overheard on a hot mic saying that Trump's handling of spending was incredibly irresponsible. Democratic Senator Jack Reed responded by saying he thinks Trump is crazy. This is crazy. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't say that no, lightly like and as a kind of, you know, a goofy guy. This week, Republican Senator Bob Corker questioned the president's stability. Watch. The president has not yet... Um, has not yet been able to demonstrate the stability uh, nor some of the competence that he needs to demonstrate in order to be successful. Now, some Democrats, not surprisingly, have gone a lot further. California Democrat Zoe Lofgren asked if Trump has early stage dementia. She said she wants a medical mental exam conducted. Another California Dem, Jackie Speer, called for Trump's removal under the 25th Amendment. And Al Gore said Trump should resign. We're also hearing this in some liberal corners of the news media and the entertainment world. Uh, you saw late night comics got very serious this week. Jimmy Kimmel made jokes about making Trump a powerless king, but he meant what he said about getting Trump out of office. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I'm asking you, the people who supported Donald Trump, to step in and help for the good of this country. Mike Pence is ready. He's boring. He's relatively sane. He looks like a neighbor you might borrow a lawnmower from. <laughs> Let's get him in there before it's too late. Let's make America Great Britain again. Now, if you've picked up your Sunday paper, you've seen that the papers are filled with cries for change. This is the Los Angeles Times, the liberal editorial board there saying, enough is enough. Trump is, quote, a danger to the Constitution, a threat to our democratic institutions. Now, all this brings me back to those questions that are tough to ask out loud on national television. Is the President of the United States suffering from some sort of illness? Is he racist? Is he fit to be Commander-in-Chief? And one more. Is it time for objective journalists, and I don't mean opinion folks, I mean down-the-middle journalists, to address these questions head-on? And if so, how in the world should they do that?